Hi guys, you are welcome to today's episode. In today's lesson, we are going to look at how to cut and then sew a wrap peplum top. So since it's a peplum top, that means the front is going to be open. Where we'll wrap it with these two belts. When we look at our flare tool, this is a flare. When we look at our flare, the center is longer than the side seam. So we have to cut a flare that's, that the side seam is going to be shorter and then the center front and the center back is going to be longer. And then we attach it with a bishop sleeve. When we look over here, I've already cut my fabrics already, but then I'll brush through. You would need three yards of print and then two yards of lining so this is my print the print i'm using and then i'm using a red lining and then you have to get a thread that will match with your lining so this is what i did since the with the wrap top since the front is open so what i'm also wearing is a, a wrap top i didn't plan off when this is just a coincidence so this is a wrap top that means the front is going to be open so i'll cut the back first and the back is placed on fold so this is what i did i i folded my lining my quarter bust plus seam allowance and when we look at our drawing there's no dart in front and there's no dart too at the back so this is a dartless peplum top so you fold the fabric your quarter waist, quarter bust, plus your seam allowance. So that is how I folded my fabric. After that, I indicated that this will be my hem, and then I'll work towards this area. So from folding, I measured my shoulder to waist plus seam allowance, and then I had my shoulder line. Let me do it clearly on this board. Let's take this side to be my waist. So I folded my fabric, my quarter bust plus seam allowance. The reason why I used my quarter bust is that the bust is the widest part of my upper torso. That is why I used my bust. So after my bust is, let's say, 30, um, 36, divided by 4 is 9 plus 1 and half seam allowance. So let's say this is how I folded my fabric. So this is the area in which I am going to work. Then from there, I plotted my shoulder to waist measurement plus half an inch waist stitching. My shoulder to waist is 16. So plus half an inch will be 16 and half. Then I square across to get my shoulder line. Now from here, I have to locate my bust line. To locate your bust line, there is this law or rule that says that divide your shoulder to waist into two you get your bust line so it's like a rule and it, it works for any perfect human being you divide your shoulder to waist into two you get your bust line so my shoulder to waist is 16 if i divide it into two i'll get eight then i square across and name it b which is bust then i have to locate my across back line my across back line to there's this law that says divide your shoulder to bust into two then you get your across back line so mine is going to be four then i name it a b which is across back now these are the lines that i will need please remember this side is placed on fold now let's work with the shoulder first now you have to for on the shoulder line plot half shoulder to shoulder my shoulder to shoulder is 15 so half of it is seven and half since we are going to attach a sleeve we need seam allowance at the armhole side so it will be eight inches then i mark down this way on that line i'm going to come down to slope my shoulder by one inch we don't have a straight shoulder our shoulders are sloped and the difference is from the highest point to this place is one inch different that is why i came down one inch now from this new point i have to locate my shoulder length my shoulder length is five so i'll add the five and 
I'll, I'll add the half an inch that I added to the shoulder to shoulder, making five and half. I'm going to stand here and then locate five and half on my shoulder line. So wherever my five and half or your six or your four and half will be on the shoulder line, then you mark it. Then you join with your straight rule to have your shoulder line. After that, you add half an inch seam allowance to the shoulder because we are going to stitch the front shoulder and the back shoulder together. So this is what we have. Now, since this is the back, and then looking at our style, our back neckline is up. So I am going to trace my shoulder line towards the center this way. Then I come down one inch to shape my back neckline this way. So I'm done with my neckline and my shoulder line. I have to come to the across back line. On the across back line, you have to plot half across back plus half an inch stitching. My half across back is seven plus half an inch is going to be seven and half. Then I mark. We are done with this one. Then we come to the bust. Since the bust is divided by four, I'm going to divide my bust measurement into four. Then I plot. Then after that, I add my one and half seam allowance. This is going to be at the end of the folded fabric. Then I come to the waistline. I have to plot my quarter waist. My waist is 29, so I plot my quarter waist plus seam allowance, one and half. Then I join the waist and then the bust together. Then I construct my armhole to making sure that all these points, three points, meet in a smooth curve. So I'm going to have something like this for the back. So this is how I derived my back. Then I cut through the outlines. Cut through the outlines. So I had something like this. When you open it, you have your full back. So after I had this, I folded another portion, another fabric. Then I placed the back on it but this time around since it's an overlap dress you have to have an extension at the center line this is where the center line is so at the center line when you are folding you have to add your extension but in doing that you have to use this principle for every basic 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 overlap you are going to use half of your nipple to nipple plus seam allowance so this is what i did after folding my, my fabric into two, like this, after folding my fabric into two, this side was placed on fold. And then I marked where my center line will be. Then I placed this one after it. The excess here is my half nipple to nipple plus half an inch stitching. Then right from there, I came to plot my shoulder my shoulder i came to mark my shoulder where my my neckline starts from then from there i joined that point to my fold line here to get a diagonal line or let's say a vein so if you want a, a u from this side it depends on you anyhow you want it so if you want u that means you are going to curve something like this to get a u if you want straight you go ahead head and do your straight if you want something like this too you can have something like this but this is what the picture looks like that is why we did it like that and then after that i cut through all around then i had my front so that's the only work we do at the front get your half nipple to nipple extension and then make sure that you cut all through like the back, how the back is. But when you are done, you have to reshape the front armhole. The reason why we reshape the front armhole is the uh, cross back 
is wider than our across chest at the front. So since the back is the bigger one, we'll use the bigger one to cut. But after that, we will reshape we'll reshape the armhole. So the armhole was something like this. It was something like this, just like the back. And then from the across back line, I went in half an inch and then reshaped my armhole. This is going to remove a lot of creases and folds at your armhole area. That is why we do it like this. Then I have, when I open it, I'll get my two front and then one back. You place it on your fashion fabric and then you cut. Now let's look at how I derived my flare. So this is the flare. This is the flare. Now to get the flare, I used one yard of my lining to cut the flare. So let's quickly do that. So if it's if this is one yard of my lining, I folded it, making this place placed on fold. Now this is what I did. Whatever after taking my blouse length, my blouse length is 23. So after taking that measurement, since I know that my shoulder to waist is 16, I took 16 out of the 23, which is my full top length. Then um, I was left with 7 inches. So the 7 inch, we are going to stitch the hem half an inch and then the waistline to half an inch. So from here, I will come up. This is the hem. This is another hem. So from the center of the fold line, I will come up. I will indicate here as front and indicate here as back. So if this is front and this is back, this side will be my side. So at the front, I'll mark my 8 inches flare length. At the back, too, I'll mark my, mark my 8 inches flare length. Then from this two distance, I'm going to look for the center line. When we look at our picture, our side is shorter. So if the front and the back is 8 inches, I don't have to make the side to 8 inches because I want a shorter side seam. So I'm going to take either two, two and a half or three. How short you want the side to be, then you mark. Then from there, you join. You join round. This is going to give you a lot of um, fullness at the waistline. Then from there, you mark your eight inches. Reduce, 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 reduce till you get to the side. The front to mark 8 inches, 8 inches, reduce, 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 and get to the side. Then you cut through. So this is how I derived my flare from one yard of fabric. This is just one yard, but as you can see, I have a lot of fullness at the waistline, which I am either going to gather or pleat. Now it is time to do a sewing. But before we start with our sewing, since this is a, the lining, we have to interface the neckline to make our neckline firm and stronger. So we are going to interface our neckline from here to here. If you want an interfacing length of 2 inches, we'll face all here. Then you do same to the opposite side. But please, when you are interfacing, make sure that the interfacing is opposite each other. Don't go and interface the same sides. So put it this way, like the way you'll be wearing it. Or arrange it well. Then interface here and interface here. Don't interface the same side. So I'm going to interface here and interface here. And then interface the back too before we stitch the shoulder so for our flare to we have to open up so please you are going to have folded here and then folded here just cut through one of it and then name that side the front because the front is open so if there's zip at the back or your wrap is at your back that means the open is going to be at the back so this is my flare and then this fold line is helping me to locate the center of my flare so to stitch the flare i am going to open 
my flare to the right side this is the right side and place the lining on the right side and then pin all through you have to pin all through so after pinning then you stitch either half or quarter from this end all through the hem please the hem not the waistline the hem or the down part of the flare so you are going to stitch all through and then top stitch and then iron after that you seal this portion we don't need this portion open so we are going to stitch that side to turn to the wrong side turn the lining to the wrong side and then iron it to. so this is what we have the shoulders have been joined so this is what we have i did same too to my fashion fabric but with the fashion fabric please make sure that the right sides of the fabrics are facing each other before you stitch now it's time to fix or stitch the neckline this way make sure your shoulder lines are meeting then open your seam up this is the time we have to insert one of our belts and when we look at our top assuming i am wearing this this way i have to wrap it this way so this is where the um, belt is supposed to be not on this one not on this one i am going to insert one belt here and another belt here before i join the side seam now to measure our belt our belt is going to be equal to our waist measurement so if your waist is 30 measure 30 by how big or small you want your belt to be so this is my fabric So this is how I'm going to cut my my belt and then I have to cut two I want the thickness of my belt the finished one to be three inches so if the finished one is three inches I'll stitch it half an inch making three and half and then i'm going to fold it getting seven inches so i have to cut seven inches my finished belt the finished belt i want i want three inches i am going to stitch my belt half an inch so i'll fold my tape measure into two half of three and half is seven inches so i have to get a seven inch belt by 30 inches waist or measurement so this is half of 30 since it's placed on fold i have to mark 30 by 7 inches too belt so i'm going to use a single ply seam to finish my belt with a single ply seam you just have to fold the right side of your band or belt into two this way 
then you stitch along this line the length this long length you stitch up to the end then after stitching you are going to have a seam here then you press the center towards the center of the belt this way then you stitch this side to make the side seam lie at the center of the belt so this is our belt this is what i had after stitching through here I made sure my seam line was at the center and then I closed just one side. This is how I turn my belt. So I am turning the right side, bringing the right side out. Anani. Then I press so you can see my center. My seam is at the center line. Press, 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 press. will be here so this is where I'm going to insert my belt so I will place the right side where the seam is will be my wrong side so I'll place the right side of my belt on the right side of my right side of the wrap top leaving half an inch at the hem because this half an inch is the um, allowance I am going to use to stitch my flare so don't put your belt here leave half an inch before you put your flare sorry you put your belt there then you place the right side of the lining on the right side of the African or the fashion fabric so from here I am going to make sure that my shoulder lines will meet so I am going to stitch here which is my neckline all around to this end I snip and then top stitch on the lining to give a neater finish. So this is what I have. And this is where my belt is. So you can see the half an inch seam allowance for the flare. So now it's time to join the side seams. So where I have my first belt, I'm going to place my second belt there. That one to allowing half an inch seam allowance. So I'll put the right side of the belt on the right side of the fabric, allowing half an inch seam allowance. Then I put it on the side seam of the back this way. And then stitch my seam allowance, which is one and a half. I'm going to stitch this side. And then do same two to the other side. And then now we work on our sleeves. Join. This is our side seam. And please, as you sew, don't forget to press or iron. So we press or iron along. Don't finish with everything before you iron. As you stitch, you press. As you stitch, you press. So it's time to fix our sleeve. I'm measuring my armhole to check whether I have the my exact armhole measurement. This is 15. My armhole measurement is 16. So divided by 2, 8. So this is less than my usual or normal armhole measurement. So I'm going to come down a little. I just need half an inch 
Okay, so I have my eight now. So I'll do same to the other side. Seven and a half. So I have to go in a little to shape my armhole. I have already pinned it, so I'll remove my pins and then reshape my angle this way. So now you see the half an inch I took from the front. This is how it's going to look like. So since I have my eight now, it's time to cut my sleeve. So now it's time to cut the sleeve. For bell sleeves, for sorry, for bishop sleeves, we have to cut a bell sleeve. To cut a bell sleeve, we are going to slant our fabric, making the hem bigger. So how big you want your hem to be, that's how you are going to fold it. So in this method, you are going to fold your fabric according to your the fabric you you have making sure that it will be enough for both sleeves so let's say this is how big i want my sleeve to be so this is how i slanted it this way like diagonal this is how big i want my sleeve to be so that we can attach it with an elastic so this will be my hem and then this side will be where my armhole or my sleeve crown will be. If you look at how I have slanted it, this side is giving me a V. So I have to curve and take the V out. I'm taking the V off before I measure my sleeve length. So I want a sleeve length of 25. My normal sleeve length is 22, but then I want it to fold on the elastic. So I'm making it longer than my usual sleeve length. So let me make it 25. Then I square across. Now I mark my half armhole. This is half of my armhole. So after getting half of my armhole, I'm going to divide that portion into four. On this last one, I'm going to come down five inches. The next one, four and half. Then this one, the next one, two and half. So five, four and half, two and half. I won't touch here. I won't go down here. I won't go down here. So this is zero. This is one. Then from one, I curve up to where the two and a half is. Then from that side to where the four and a half is, I go down. Now I have to reshape my armhole well to get a smooth curve. Then I measure my 8 inches, which is half of my armhole. And then add my seam allowance, which is one and half. Then slant it to where I want my opening to be. So this is how big I want my bishop sleeve to be. Then I quickly cut through the outline. So I'm placing my first sleeve on another folded part. That one too, making sure that the hem is wider than where the sleeve crown will be. As for bishop sleeve, please, you cut according to the fabric you have. Otherwise, you are going to end up cutting the first one maybe too big than the second one. So 
out of our three yards, this is the swashes left. That is why I'm saying the style. With this style, you need three yards. So this is our bell sleeve that we are going to put elastic here to make it a bishop sleeve. Now, when you look at our front, the front angle is narrower than the back. So I am going to do the same thing to my sleeve. So I open up my sleeve. This is the right side. And then open the right side. Making the right side face each other. This is my front. Okay. This will be my front. So I am going to go in around this side. Half an inch. To match up with my body armhole. I'll snip, create a notch for me to know that this is where the front is and this is where the back is. Now it's time to prepare the casing for our elastic. I'm going to knit in here. I'm going to knit in here and then turn half an inch lay and then stitch on it so that I can pass my elastic through it. So I have knitting my hem, the hem of my sleeve, and then turn half an inch lay. I'm passing my elastic through the hole. So I'm going to do that until I get to Leave. So please, my elastic is short, so I have to be very careful so that it doesn't run through. So I'm going to pin the elastic together, then I continue with my pulling. This is too big, so I'm going to pull my elastic until I get the size that I want. So this will be fine for me. This will be fine for me because I'm going to stitch here. I don't want it too tight so that I can breathe through. So after having it this way, I'm going to stitch the side of the sleeve with my seam allowance. I'm going to stitch this side all the way here. Then I do same to this one. Now, if you want to know how I get my flare looking like this, you can contact me on 244 for a small charge. This is my secret weapon. So now it's time to attach my beautiful flare to my upper torso. So she's going to, my assistant is going to attach the flare to the upper torso. Attach it to it. Pinning. Snip the center of the flare and then locate the center of the upper torso and then pin together. After that, you can share the rest of the goddess 
on it, making it very even. So she will continue from there whilst I stitch my sleeves. So this is what we have. Our wrap peplum top is ready. So if you want to tie at the back, you can tie at the back. If you want to tie in front too, you can bring it in front. Loving it, so this is our sleeve. This is our top. If you enjoyed this video, give, give us a thumbs up and then subscribe to our channel. If you want to contact me, I'm on Facebook as Rio Apparel and on Instagram at Rio underscore Apparel. See you in our next episode. Bye.